Many Web3 projects rely on developer communities to help fuel their growth. DeFi protocols, Layer 1 blockchains, and Layer 2 scaling solutions all need developer communities to build momentum. But how do you attract the developer community? That's what we're going to talk about today. My name is Rory, and I've helped grow the Chainlink community since day one. And in this quick video, I'll be sharing four key steps that will help you attract an engaged developer community. So let's get right into it. Step one, define the purpose of your developer community. The first step to building a developer community is to really ask yourself why. Why do you need one? And why would developers want to be part of it? The thing is, communities usually form naturally. People are slowly pulled together towards a center of gravity, a shared passion, a common goal. But it's hard to create one deliberately, and it certainly doesn't happen overnight. The best thing you can do is to be clear on what's going to be your center of gravity. Think about the kinds of developers that you want to involve. Understand what they're passionate about. Then you can figure out your shared values. These values will then help to shape your messaging, the content you create, and the whole design of your community experience. This really brings us to step two, which is designing the community experience. Community experience covers the entire journey that brings developers into your community, how they interact with one another, and how you will interact with them. For developers, this journey usually starts with content and code. They'll spend time reading your documentation and trying things out on their own. But if they get stuck, they might choose to get help from other users. This means that they need to sign up to a discussion forum or your Discord server. This may sound really simple, but you need to put thought into how this process feels, not into just how it works. For example, how will your content speak to developers as they move through this process? Pay close attention to the copy on your sign-up pages, your invitation email, and your first welcome message. Start with a small set of discussion channels or topics. In the early stages, try to personalize your messaging and your onboarding experience as much as you can. Show an interest in every new member and make sure that they feel welcome. Step three, focus on your first 10 members. While you might feel pressure to grow your community as fast as you can, getting it right early on should really be your priority. There are many advantages to having a small community, and once you get bigger, you're never going to have these advantages again. The biggest advantage is that you can really talk to members individually. You can get to know them and put more time into answering their questions. You can solicit their feedback and even jump on quick calls. The real challenge is to find members who stay active and keep the discussion going. If your goal is to find just these first 10 members, you can really recruit developers from your wider network or your team's network. It's much easier to spark a discussion when you have some kind of personal connection. For example, if you've already had some passionate one-on-one -on -one discussions, you can kind of just repeat these conversations in the community and see if others have any things to add. That brings us to step four, which is growing your community with content and incentives. Once you've established a solid base of these 10 tight-knit community members, it's time to change tactics. This means attracting developers outside of your personal network. To do this, you need to create content that goes beyond pure technical documentation. This content should add value to the developer and really inspire discussion in your community. If you spend enough time nurturing these first 10 members, you should already have a good idea of what topics resonate and which don't. Use these topics to create a content plan that covers the next three months so that you can plan ahead. Another tactic is to run bug bounties and different types of competitions to get developers building with your technology. Once you move up the funding ladder, you can also continue a developer grants program. Think about the projects around you. If they're running uh, things such as hackathons, ask to join them. It's a lot easier than organizing things on your own. Tactics like these can pull developers in your community because they will eventually turn to your discussion forums and your Discord for help. Just make sure your assignments are well designed and give developers the freedom to be creative. That's really all I have for now. We hope that you found this content useful. This is really a huge topic and we've just scratched the surface, but we hope this simple four-step guide helps you establish the right conditions for attracting a sustainable and engaged developer community, a community that will help you improve your product and drive network effects with other ecosystems. Thank you so much and I hope you have a great day.